Hi, my name is Jane Wanza Karanja. In this era of high fertilizer prices, did you know the alternative ways to add nitrogen to your soils? This is how we are doing it at Wanska Farms. Here is my story. Um, as a young girl, I grew up on a farm. My parents were farmers. And so I grew up uh, growing crops, working on the farm, weeding. Much as I was in boarding school, we came from school on the holidays to work on the farm. So my interaction with the soil and crops and animals was from my upbringing. And that grew up into a subject I loved in school. Did agriculture in primary and uh, secondary school. And finally, even at the university. And so, and that has grown into my career. Um, I have been in the agricultural sector for close to 20 years. And it's very fulfilling. Agriculture is what feeds the world. It's so interesting that uh, despite being um, an agriculturalist, I've had this farm for a while, close to about five years. But it's until COVID hit that I realized I wasn't maximizing on this farm. Initially, I just grew maize and beans and um, my trees, I love trees, but when COVID hit and we are spending more time at home, it became my point for distressing. And uh, visited a few farms and saw what farmers were doing around here. And I thought, why not? I have all the knowledge, I have the networks, why can't I do something? So that's how Wanska Farms was born. And uh, we started small with just like uh, 500 grams of onion seed, did our first nursery, and then we realized, wow, the seeds are growing. We need to do the beds to transplant the seeds. And so slowly we started with just one, one side of the farm. And uh, it has eventually all been um, developed into what it is today. 2.5 acres of drip lines and uh, with a continuous cropping calendar. Our main crop here is onion, uh, red bulb onion. But we have also started diversifying to tomatoes, uh, green peppers, uh, melons, um, courgettes. Uh, as we get to understand the needs of the markets near us, we have uh, widened our, sco uh, our scope of crops. It's important for farmers to diversify their risks. When you do monocropping, one crop, there are two things. There are market risks. In times of um, when f uh, prices drop, you don't have a fallback, you just have one crop. And uh, secondly, also there is a very critical aspect of soil fertility management. And so by diversifying crops, you're also able to diversify your soil fertility management program. So different crops have different nutrient needs. So by understanding um, your market first, what crops uh, are being demanded in the market, then do your farm plan based on that, uh, your rotation program based on that. Um, occasionally, it is also good to just stop. Remember that soil is a living thing. I would urge my fellow farmers to pay attention to their soil because soil degrades so fast with our continuous farming kind of program. And so continuous addition of manure, organic matter, is very important not only to supply nutrients to the crops, to improve water retention, and um, also the growth of the other organisms in the soil that enhance crop growth. So here at Wanska Farms, we take our soil very seriously. So we have a continuous manuring program. Whether it's goat manure, cow manure, or chicken manure, we always continuously, after every season, add manure to our soils. But also of late, we have discovered sun hemp. This is a cover crop. Some time back last year, I was looking for a cover crop. We had just a very good crop of maize and I felt I needed to introduce cover crops, but I could not get the seeds. Until sometime this year, I saw a post by UFAM and they were talking about sun hemp. 
and I reached out to them, got my seeds and started. So sun hemp is a leguminous plant. And the first thing that that tells you being a leguminous plant is that it adds atmospheric nitrogen into the soil. Secondly, with all this growth, when you cut it and plow it back into the soil, you are increasing your organic matter. And when you increase your organic matter, organic matter helps in water absorption. It helps also, it provides nutrients. And uh, therefore you have a better crop. And in this era of high fertilizer prices, this is one of the steps to reduce the fertilizer usage on the farm. So I'm experimenting with sun hemp and it's been an awesome experience so far because number one, it grows very fast. This is two months old, slightly less than two months old and it's already ready for integration into the soil. So if you plan your plots in such that you have a two months resting period, you can grow your sun hemp. Secondly, because of the flowers and how beautiful they look, they attract bees and every farmer wants bees on their farm for pollination. And finally is that um, it incorporates a lot of um, biomass into the soil and that helps with water retention and since we use drip irrigation, for us that's a very big plus. Farmers need to use both sun hemp and manure. One thing about manure is that <laughs> The nutrient content of, a, of manure depends on what the animal ate, how the manure was handled, how, how long it has been sitting out there, exposure to sun, evapor uh, evaporation of nutrients. So it's not possible to have a constant composition in terms of nutrients for manure. And so for me, largely manure, I will take in whatever I get in terms of nutrients, but largely for me it's for the organic matter. And sun hemp, Studies have shown and proven that it's a very major nitrogen fixer. So for me, for sun hemp, besides the organic matter, it's the nitrogen. So I would urge farmers to use them in conjunction if you have either of them. Because also manure is not cheap anymore. Manure has become very expensive. And so sun hemp is another way to substitute. With regard to inorganic fertilizers, um, the prices of late have just gone off the roof. And it's not just of late. Over the growing season, even since they started, uh, growing on this farm. I've just seen fertilizer prices just rise, rise, rise by the day. And as a farmer who is growing crops commercially, that just pushes your cost of production so high, such that uh, you're not able to break even. You, 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 you're also now starting to struggle to find markets that can pay higher and higher prices. So one of the ways to keep uh, prices down is by using crops like this sun hemp that bring in the nitrogen. Yes, you can use inorganic fertilizers, but at a much reduced rate. Like I, f I look forward to really stepping down my use for inorganic fertilizers. Yes, they are good in terms of boosting productivity, but um, the cost is just not manageable anymore, let alone the availability because of late you go to the shops and you can't get CN, you can't get a balanced NPK, you're finding this and not the other. So uh, having alternatives is actually my agenda, finding alternatives so that I'm never one stuck up at one time. Secondly, there's the issue of salts. Inorganic fertilizers tend to leave salts in the soil and some of those salts then push nutrients or make nutrients unavailable to the plant. So natural materials like this, it's like going to a forest and finding all the droppings of the trees and everything, the facility that is in our forest. It's the same concept we are trying to use here. Nature to improve our soil fertility. So this has the, sun hemp has the benefit of, there's no issue of uh, uh, leftover salts that can interfere with nutrient absorption. So what happens once you have grown your sun hemp, one important thing to remember is that you want critical biomass into your soil. So the planting is literally drilling you drill, um, you want a very high population. This is a very vigorous growing plant. So um, once you drill, you, if you have water, it's always good. It helps it come up very well. And then you don't need to do anything else. Just give it water. If there's rain, it will grow. There's no fertilizer or spray, nothing. And then two months, just when it flowers, like this one, as you can see with flowers, as soon as it begins to flower, when you're about 80% of the flowers, you just need to cut, slash it all the way down, 
leave it there. If you want to plant, you can incorporate it immediately, as in dig it in immediately. This decomposes very fast. But if you are not digging immediately, you can leave it just sitting on top of the beds, let it dry a bit, and then you incorporate it into the soil. Over time, it will decompose and get incorporated into your soil. When you are cutting, because you remember you want to incorporate it into the soil and you'll be planting. So you don't want things um, disturbing you when you're planting. Like for us here, we intend to plant potatoes. So it's advisable that you cut in small bits because it's like shredding. You try to shred eh? in small bits because that quickens the decomposition, that quickens the integration into the soil and uh, reduces it from being a nuisance. Okay? So you cut into stages slowly, slowly, one row after another, and then you leave it and then plow it in. Once you cut, you cut in your sun hemp, and remember, maximum two months, otherwise it becomes too tough to decompose, is that you can plant two weeks later. So it doesn't delay the farmer in terms of when they, when they need to plant. And where you have continuous cropping, you can almost even plant immediately after because it continues to decompose as the plant grows. So it doesn't come in the way of um, planting your farm. To farmers, I want to tell you, soil is not just um, a resource to take for granted. It's the most important resource for any farmer. Yes, there's hydroponics and everything, but also water is scarce. Soil is a, is a big resource we have in this country, freely given, but we need to take care of our soils. There's a lot of information online from different institutions on soil health. Take time to read, understand soils. Soil testing is also very important. It's now even more affordable than ever before. We have many companies doing soil testing. Do sampling every two years or so, depending on your cropping program. For us, it's very intense. This farm is always under crop, so we do it every two years. Do your soil test, know how your soil is looking like versus the crops you want to grow and their nutrient demand. And then deliberately and very consciously, instead of leaving your soil bare during your farrow season, just get sun hemp and something like this. Cowpeas are also very good for soil fertility management, just like regular beans. And they, those even actually have an op output in terms of a product at the end of the day you can sell, but they also help your soil. So in your farrow season, instead of leaving your farms empty, you can grow some of these crops, especially if you have irrigation. Sun hemp apparently also, this is fodder. If I had livestock, I would be thinking about keeping some of this for my livestock. It provides nutrients for the livestock too. So, but for us, it's largely for incorporation back into the soil. So think alternatives as farmers, we're not fixed into one thing. Read widely, consult, visit some of these institutions and you get to learn a lot about how you can keep your soil rejuvenated. That's how we are managing our soil fertility at Wanska Farms. I'm curious to know how you're managing your soil fertility. Share your story.